In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. My beloved, today is the third Sunday of the month of Tuba, and the reading of the Gospel of today comes to us from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 3. Today there are words that are spoken by St. John the Baptist that are extremely important for all of us to be able to, uh, to contemplate on and to think about and to allow ourselves to be able to truly understand the hidden meaning behind what it is that St. John is saying. What we see here is that there is a dispute that happens between those who are following St. John the Baptist and the rest of the Jews. And they begin to argue specifically about the rites of purification. Now what you should know is that the Jewish people already believed in the concept of baptism. That's where St. John got it. The idea of constantly washing in living water was one of the means by which the Jews believed that they could purify themselves. And so an argument happened between the disciples of John because John was baptizing them and calling them to repentance, telling them repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And those who were of the Jews who believed that John was a troublemaker, a person who was going to cause riots between the government and the people of the Jews. And at the same time, Jesus and his disciples also began to baptize. And the disciples of John who loved him began to feel a certain amount of jealousy, afraid that somehow that the people who loved John and who start to follow John would leave him and start to follow Jesus. And so they went to John and they told him the following, Rabbi, he who is with you beyond the Jordan to whom you have testified, behold, he is baptizing and all are coming to him. I want you to imagine the situation of where it is that their desire of their heart is to tell him, we don't want you to lose the people that are following you. We believe that you are a prophet sent from God and we don't want people to stop hearing the message of repentance that you have come to give. But they're saying this because they don't know who Jesus is yet. They don't recognize that he is the son of the living God. But John has seen it and this is why John said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. So John begins to correct their understanding. And he begins to tell them, I'm only here to prepare the way, but the one who I've been preparing for has arrived. So listen to the words that John says to be able to teach his disciples. John answered and said, A man can receive nothing unless it has been given to him from heaven. The human being can receive absolutely nothing of himself. And I want you and me to take a look at how it is that the world that we live in today would make you believe that everything that you have is because of your hard work. It would make you believe that your success and your health is all because of you. You earned it with your arm. That any respect that you have, it's because you have chosen correctly. That all good things in your life are because of you. You are the source of the goodness in your life. The world would even try to convince our children that if it follows the rules of the world, that they also can be successful and powerful, that they can be happy and wealthy, and that somehow these things don't come from God from above. But the truth is, is that you and me owe every single breath that we take to God. We owe God every single aspect of goodness that is within us. We would have no eyesight if it was not for Him. We would have no capacity to be intellectual if it was not for Him. We would not know how to love if it was not for Him. We would not even know discipline and hard work if it was not for Him. Every part of our being is indebted to Him who created us with this goodness, who created us in His image and likeness. And John confesses this and says what? A man can receive nothing unless it was given to him from heaven by God. But what does this mean? It means that you and me need to go back and to take a look 
at what God intended for Adam. What did God do for Adam and Eve? It says in Genesis chapter 2 that God planted a garden and then he placed a man in the garden. So what did God do? He prepared everything for him. The garden was already healthy and fruitful. The trees and the fruit of the garden were already planted and taken care of by God. The animals were already created and tamed by God. All of nature was in perfect harmony before Adam even came into existence by God. And what did God do? He said, Adam, I give you all of creation in your hands. Tame it, subdue it, have dominion over it. I bless you and your wife and all of the children you will have. And I grant you authority over all of creation. So what was Adam's responsibility? Adam's responsibility was to be the priest of all of creation. To live his entire life liturgically. What does it mean to live liturgically? It means to offer back to God everything he's given to us. What is it that we do in the divine liturgy? We take from the things that God has given to us. And we tell him we offer unto you from what is yours. The things that you have given to us are not our own. We know that they come from you, so we offer back to you those very things that you gave us. So what was Adam expected to do? To take all of the beauty of creation that God had given to him, all of the goodness that surrounds him, even his own life, and to tell God, I offer it back to you freely. The church teaches you and me that the greatest gift that we can offer back to God is the very freedom that He gave us. Real love is expressed when I am free to say no to you. Then sin and evil and death enters into the world. And you and me are still falling prey to this every single day. In the liturgy of St. Gregory that we pray, in the Gregorian liturgy, what do we say? We don't say Adam plucked for himself death. We don't say Eve plucked for herself death. What do we say? I plucked for myself the sentence of death. Why does St. Gregory say that we plucked? We weren't in the garden. We weren't there when he created Adam and Eve. Why would St. Gregory say, I plucked for myself the sentence of death? Because I continue to follow in the same footsteps as Adam and Eve in their fall. Even though I have received grace, even though I receive the indwelling Holy Spirit, even though I have God himself who dwells within me, I continue to pluck for myself. I don't offer back to God. If you are a parent who God has given you healthy children, what is your responsibility? Offer them to God. It's good that you want them to be doctors and engineers and pharmacists and teachers and successful people. Let them be all of those things, but offer them first to God. What are we expected to do with our homes? To decorate them and make them nice and invite people so they could see it? To put our homes on display? To be happy that I live in 3,000, 4,000 square feet? Offer your home to God. If he is not present in that home, if I don't invite the stranger and the orphan, if I don't allow my home to be a place where people are healed, then I have failed. I have not offered it to God. If everything that we own our heart, our energy, our money, our love, the compassion that we have to offer. If every aspect of our life is not offered back to God, then we fail to hear the words of St. John. Where John says, a man can receive nothing unless it has been given to him from heaven. And to make his point, what does he tell his disciples? He must increase. And I must What does it mean for me to decrease? The simplest way of understanding what it means for us to decrease is to get out of the way. Get out of the way. 
God wants to work. Get out of His way. Your ego is in the way. Your fear is in the way. Your jealousy is in the way. Your envy is in the way. Your anger is in the way. Let Him work. It's not about you and me. There is something so much greater that can be done with the life that has been given to you. If only you don't make it about you. If only you realize <clears throat> that like John, you have come to prepare the way. But the one that you are preparing for, get out of his way. Let him work. You're afraid of being a bad father? Get out of the way. Let God show you how to be a father. You're afraid of being a bad mother, a bad son, a bad daughter, a bad brother or sister. Get out of the way. Don't make it about you. Allow Him to show you what it means. If we can only learn from the spirit of St. John, this is the same St. John who we say has the same spirit of Elijah. A fiery spirit filled with conviction and power and authority. But that doesn't make him proud. That doesn't make him arrogant. This doesn't make him stubborn. On the contrary, he knows where he received this spirit from. Any gift that I have is not mine. Any talent that I have is not mine. I am not allowed to bury it. I am not allowed to invest it only for myself. Every gift that has been given to us, the Lord will turn to you and me and say, I wanted to use it through you. If only you got out of the way. If only you let me. We sometimes hear people say things that are very, very difficult to hear. People who don't believe in God, they come and tell us, you believe in a good God. You believe in a God who is almighty. You say that He loves humanity. Why isn't He doing anything about the suffering that's in the world? Why isn't He doing anything about the people who are sick, or who are orphaned? Why isn't He doing anything about the people who need Him? And the answer is that God does do something. You know what God did as a solution to the pain that is in the world? He created you. He created you. You and me are supposed to be the solution to all of these things. When God needs hands to embrace people who need love, we're supposed to tell Him, use mine. When God needs feet to be able to visit those who are cast out and alone and driven out of communities, our response should be, use mine. When God needs finances to support those people who have nothing to be able to buy for themselves, my response should be, take from me. It was never mine. You're the one who gave it to me. When the Lord needs a warm bed and food to be able to offer to those who have nothing, nowhere to rest their head and no food to nourish their bodies, Lord, you have my own bed. You have access to my kitchen and my pantry. Use whatever you want, Lord. We are supposed to be the solution. It is not God who is not acting. It is not God who has abandoned us. It is you and me who need to learn from the words of St. John. The world that we live in could be so different if we just got out of the way. Belesh the world, because when we speak of the world, we think it's too big. Your home could be different. Your life and the life of your spouses and your children and your neighbors could be so different if we just learn to get out of the way. Believe me when I tell you from the bottom of my heart, this church would be so much more holier if I got out of the way. If it was no longer about me 
and my ego and I got out of the way, you would see Christ here. And everybody in this church would be different if it wasn't for me. How much more could God do if I didn't make it about me? The psalm that we read today before today's gospel. We went through fire and through water, but you brought us out to rich fulfillment. Bless our God, you peoples, and make the voice of his praise be to the Lord. What is this water? And what is this fire that we went through? How many more examples do we need of God desiring to redeem us, to work with us, to save us? We know of how the people of Israel were enslaved in Egypt. We know how we ourselves as a church know our own history of persecution and pain and suffering. We know our own sin and slavery to sin and addiction. And yet the Lord brought us out with rich fulfillment. We are present here today. Offer back to Him what He gave you. If He has brought you out to rich fulfillment, use the richness and the wealth that He has given you. I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about the freedom that He gave you. Use this wealth of liberty that He gave you. That you may tell Him, let me decrease so that you might increase. I will leave you with this one last example of this that is probably one of the most beautiful examples in our modern history. All of you know Baba Krullus. All of you know Baba Krullus. The great saint who was the patriarch of the church. And Baba Krullus is a contemporary. Baba Krullus. He was the patriarch of the church less than 60 years ago. 60 years ago? 70 years ago. One of the sayings of Baba Krullus when it came to this very specific subject, what did he say? He says, let us disappear that he may fully appear in his glory. Let us disappear that he may fully appear in his glory. And Baba Krullus didn't say this just because he thought it was beautiful. We saw it in his life. Did you know that on the day where the patriarch of the Coptic church is enthroned and he officially becomes the patriarch, he is supposed to read the gospel of that day. And the gospel of that day is always the same. The gospel that is read when a new patriarch is enthroned is the gospel where the Lord Jesus Christ says what? I am the good shepherd. Why is it that very specific gospel that is read? Because on that day we recognize that the Holy Spirit has appointed to us a new shepherd to be able to lead the Coptic Orthodox Church as the one who sits on the seat of St. Mark the Apostle. You know what Baba Krullus did that day? The recording is still available today on YouTube if you want to go listen to it. He refused to say the words, I am the Good Shepherd. He refused. He changed the reading of the Gospel. And he said it three times. And Christ said, I am the Good Shepherd. And Christ said, I am the Good Shepherd. And Christ said, I am the Good Shepherd. Why would he add the words, and Christ said? Because the man knew from the very beginning that even though he has been given the throne of St. Mark, it's not about him. It was never about him. And if you know anything about Baba Krollos, he revived the entire Coptic Orthodox Church, a church that was at a point of complete breaking point. If it was not for Baba Krullus, I don't know if we would have a Coptic Orthodox Church like we have today. But he disappeared so that Christ may appear in his glory, in our homes, in our relationships, at work, and in the world that we live in. Let us disappear. Let us decrease that he may increase. Let us offer to him from the very things that he offered to us. To him be all glory now and forever and unto the ages of all ages. Amen.